Hello everybody, welcome to the I Am IT Geek YouTube channel. My name is Shabazz Dan, as ever, I am the IT Geek. Welcome back to another episode within my uh, Cloud Architecture CAF series, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I've not really got a distinguished name. Um, I've, I've kind of, with this series, I've been going a bit ad hoc, if I'm honest. My, normally my preparation in my content creation, I have a process. I'll, I'll do a lot of research, I'll select topics, and then I'll create sort of a, a schedule of what, you know, what order of videos I'm going to do. With this one, I kind of just started, I started just, just doing anything really that came into my head. I was like, I want to talk about Azure CAF, Microsoft CAF, you know, Cloud Option Framework. Uh, and then I, I'd, it just kind of just a coincidence that I'd kind of had a few interactions with customers on certain areas, you know, existing Azure customers, but they'd kind of lacked in certain areas, you know, the, especially with the governance, identity, and security. So I just started talking about that. And the last, so this is episode five, I think. Uh, this is six, I think, yeah, episode six. And it's just been around, you know, just ad hoc, and I've not really been doing, I normally do PowerPoint slide decks, it'll be structured, I'll do a bit of theory, and then... And I'll be honest, it, it's been a bit, it's, I've, not, I've not felt comfortable doing it. <laughs> I've, I've kind of realized that in my content creation, I need structure. Um, so I've pivoted. I've pivoted and I'm going back to my sort of uh, format of doing some slides, talking about the topic and then doing a demo at the end. So that's, how, that's kind of what we're going back to, right? So um, I've kind of, I've, I've pivoted. I'm going to kind of start a little bit again. I'm going to kind of start again with this series a little bit. I'm, I'm going to go over the topics. I've already spoken about in a bit more detail, but I'm going to start from the from the beginning around what, you know, I'm going to start talking about what is cloud governance, introduce the different areas of cloud governance I feel are very important. And they still include, um, sorry, we're going to talk about what is CAF. And part of that is governance, identity, and security. So today's episode is actually going to be around what is cloud governance. Um, so we'll get started with that. So yeah, like I said, I'm pivoting a little bit. I'm kind of starting again, uh, just because I realise, you know what, I've, I really need that structure in my content. Uh, so that's why, that's why we're kind of re just rewinding a little bit. So we're going to talk a little about what cloud governance is. I don't feel like I went into enough detail about that. What governance in the cloud option framework is? I want to talk about some key pillars. So again, when I was talking about this, I think I, I think I neglected some of these. So that's why I wanted to kind of just pivot back onto these, right? Um, so. We've got these uh, different areas here, which kind of, for me, uh, the sort of definition and purpose of cloud governance. So go governance kind of essentially ensures uh, that cloud usage is going to align with your business goals, your organizational goals, and it helps you prevent that sort of sprawl, misconfiguration, and, you know, security risks. And I've talked about security, and we're going to talk a lot more about security as we go along. It's not about restricting access, right? It's not about, you know, it does involve zero trust, obviously, but it's about enabling safe, scalable growth for, for your organization within that cloud, um, within your within your organization. So my my own opinion, I think I think this is generally, I think most people have this opinion, it's very critical. So why is it so critical to cloud, the governance? Cloud environments are very dynamic and they're, they're very decentralized, right? So without governance, you're creating a lot of risk. You've got untrolled costs, you've got security vulnerabilities, you've got compliance violations, and you've got operational inefficiencies that can happen as well if you don't govern your cloud environment. And there's always that um, a sort of battle, you could say, that you know when you've got governance versus sort of management. Obviously, with governance, that's like your strategic control, your policies, your standards, your compliance. You know, we've talked about naming conventions, stuff like that already. From a management perspective, that's your operational execution. So your monitoring, your provisioning, your support sort of mecha mechanisms. And then we take that a step further. We talk about, and we're going to talk about this in a bit more detail. You know, governance in Microsoft's cloud adoption framework. Microsoft breaks it down into into five disciplines, which we're going to look at in the next slide. But that's cost management, security baseline, resource consistency identity baseline and deployment acceleration. Now, some of these I've already mentioned in my previous videos. Uh, and these disciplines are gonna help you build that governance MVP or minimal viable product. And a minimal viable governance setup to start with a uh, scale, it's gonna grow over time as well. So these are those pillars that we mentioned earlier. Um, and this is all to do with sort of Microsoft's cloud adoption framework, CAF. Um, so I'm, I'm going to call it CAF throughout the videos. This provides a structured approach to your cloud adoption, uh, and and in governance as well. And it's it's one of those it's one of those core pillars. And governance ensures that your cloud environment it remains secure, compliant, and manageable. And as I mentioned, at scale. Um, so let's break this down a little bit more. So with cost management, the goal is to prevent overspending and, and optimizing resource usage. 
some of the tools as your cost management, billing, budgets, alerts, and tagging. We've talked about tagging already. Example here is you can set up budgets for each subscription and receive alerts when, when you're nearing that limit. Uh, and then we've got security baseline. Okay, so the goal of a security baseline is to establish a minimum security standard across all your workloads. Some of the tools Microsoft Defender for Cloud, Azure Policy, Secure Score. We're we'll going to be looking at some of these as we go along in this in this uh, series as well. Example here: you can enforce disk encryption and sort of enable threat protection on your virtual machines. Uh, the next pillar is resource consistency. So the goal here is to ensure your resources are deployed and configured consistently. Certain tools, as your blueprints, which we're going to do a demo at the end of this episode. ARM templates, BICEP, naming and tagging standards, which I've talked about already. We are going to go through those again in a bit more detail. An example here is you're going to use blueprints to enforce naming conventions and tagging policies. And we'll show you about that in a bit. We've then got that identity baseline pillar, right? So the goal here is to control access and enforce least privilege. The tools here, Microsoft Enter ID, Conditional Access, PayMar back. We're going to be talking about and showing these as we go along in the series. And the example here is requiring MFA for all users uh, and, and use PIM for admin roles. The final discipline that I want to talk about, our key pillar, is the deployment acceleration. So the goal here is to secure um, and, and be compliant of automation of deployments. Tools here as your DevOps, GitHub Actions, CI CD, pipelines, infrastructure as code. An example here is automating resource deployment with bicep templates and policy checks. These disciplines are not siloed as well, right? They're, they're interconnected. So an example is enforcing tagging, which is part of the resource consistent, consistency pillar. This is going to help cost tracking, cost, you know, the cost, in the cost management pillar, and using PIM, which is in the identity baseline pillar, that's going to support your security baselines. Okay, so very intertwined, interlinked. Okay, now let's jump into the demo um, and, and take a look at the Azure Blueprints and how they can help us. Okay, so we're back in my Azure demo portal, my I am IT Geek portal, and we want to go to Blueprints. I've already got it on my, my shortcut, but you can just type in Blueprints and it'll bring you up here. Um, so this does say on July 11th, 2026, Blueprints will be depre de de deprecated, basically. So it's asking you to migrate existing Blueprint definitions and assignments to template specs and deployment stack. So I might take a look at those in a later video, but for now I just want to kind of go through Blueprints, because these have been, um, you know, historically these have been the ones um that you use so let's just go to create a blueprint so creating a blueprint is going to help us with that um consistency here so we can either start with a blank one or we've got examples here uh so we've got you know so look at this australian government one deploys and configures policies mapped to specific australian government information security uh, manual this is this, this is a really good one for the azure security benchmark it deploys and configures azure security benchmark foundations we've got one for basic networking configures virtual networking a subnet and an sg this CAF foundation was probably the best, best, best one for us right now. Uh, for as you configures foundational best practices, which is really good. And then we've got one for migration landing zone, if you're doing any migrations. As you can see, as you go along, they've got them. We've got quite a few here, UK official, UK NHS there. This is an interesting one here. Sets up two resource groups and configures a role assignment for each one. Uh, but then here it's got common policy set up as well. Let's do the CAF foundation one, right? Let's look at this. So as with that, let's just give it a name. Let's just give it um, IT Geek Oop, hyphen, Blueprint hyphen Demo. Uh, leave my description as it is. Now we need to put this somewhere to give it a location. So well, let's put it in my I subscription there, okay? Uh, so it says here, the management of a subscription where the blueprint is saved, the definition location determines the scope of the blueprint may be assigned to. So I want it scoped at my, my sort of uh, subscription level. Okay, let's go to artifacts. So we, this is where we can add artifacts to the blueprint. So we can add, uh, add resource groups to organize where the artifacts should be deployed. So from a subscription perspective, we can do a pen cost center tag, we can append cost center tag to resource groups. All these different ones here, we've got an allow locations one. Um, so we're just going to go through, tick these if we want these. Again, you're just building your blueprint for your your tenancy, basically, right? Um, let's deploy, uh, let's look at these. Uh, allow storage account SKUs, allow virtual machine SKUs, that's a good one. Uh, I want to save that. We can also set the value, so this value should be specified when the blueprint is handed. Okay, let's go to this location here. Uh, um, I'm going to do Australia East. Right, so now I'm in Australia. 
I only want to save there. Okay, if we go to um, allow story account SKUs, let's set this value here. Um, oh, so you can set the value there, so I'm not going to do that because I don't, off the top of my head, I don't know what values are. Uh, the storage account. Well, again, for this, you'd, you'd just set it to like um, one of the, the D, one of the family SKUs, basically. So that's where you'd set them. As we go down further for a resource group for shared services, we can deploy key vault, deploy log analytics. We can add a resource group for networks. We can add a resource group for identity services um, and add a resource group for applications. And then once we've done that, we can save the draft. Uh, and essentially, we then deploy this. So this would mean that this basically gives our blueprint for every time we wanted to deploy a subscription or um, let's see if that saves. We'd basically assign this blueprint when it, it's not there yet, but eventually the blueprint over there, and then we'd assign that blueprint. Um, and again, it's just going to give us consistency. So these, you know, whatever we configured in that, so you know, the, the locations and, and the, the subscription, the virtual machine sizes, the storage group size, every subscription that we have will be set the same. So you can only have those virtual machine um, skills, you can only have those storage account skills, you can only have. Uh, same, you can only have this naming convention. So again, that's what the blueprint's there for, is to give us a, a consistency throughout um, our environment. So that's just an example of how you can set, you know, if I, if I had some SKUs that I'd put them in there, you know, we could have shown you that. But it's just, then, just make sure you know kind of what your blueprint wants to be. You need to design that. That's, that's the major thing. Obviously, I showed you how to implement blueprints. You need to, if you're going to use blueprints, um, you need to design that and how that consistency is going to look. And those pillars that I talked about, they all need discussion. They all need to be planned, uh, designed before they are implemented. Uh, so, bit of structure. I feel much better. I don't know about you guys, but I feel much, much better. Um, so some useful links in the description. I've got a, a link to all the sort of Microsoft CAF, Microsoft Learn documentation. Also uh, a link to my LinkedIn, by all means, you know, connect with me. Um, I am actually going to be doing a, a 50K giveaway soon. I'm just trying to get all the, um, the, the, the stuff for the giveaways. And I've got, I'm not going to give away, I'm not going to reveal the secret yet, but I am going to look to do a 50K giveaway for my 50K subscribers and celebrate that. Uh, I have got a link to my uh, exam content, which is all for my for members only. So you can join as a member. I've got level one, level two, level three. Um, and again, you've got access to different levels of, of the, the content. So for level one, you get the fundamentals. Level two, you get fundamentals and associate. For level three, you get expert level, associate level, and fundamental level. I am working on more content for that at the moment, but I've got, I've got six or seven different exams on there. Um, AZ 900, MS 900. AZ140, AZ700, and some security ones, not all sorts. So by all means, links down there, join, take a look. If, obviously, if you're taking exams, they'll be there to help you. I've got practical elements as well. Um, so thank you for watching. Until next time, goodbye.